I am Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today I'm going to review two packs that Gamers Grass sent to me of their bases, I believe is what's inside. Um, they're, they're unpainted, pre-made bases, uh, made of resin, and I'm, I'm going to check them out and I'm going to paint some of them up to show you examples of how you can paint them. And yeah, let's do it. I just want to let you know that they have been a fantastic company to work with. I was I was so taken with the quality of the stuff in the original video that I decided to to become a customer of Gamers Grass on a regular basis and thus far they have been fantastic. They make it easy for you to order, they start preparing your order really quickly, they start shipping it quickly. I know this because they tell you the processes as they're doing which is always nice and I've never had an order that I placed no matter how big it was and they didn't um, give everything that I needed 100% so I'm really happy with them. They're nice to talk to as well. Ooh, look at that. My favorite are the temple bases. And, oh, look at that. It's the urban warfare one. And this is a knight sized, and I do have knights, so I am going to make wonderful use of that. Oh, cool, little um, combat gauges. This must be one inch two inches three inches and half an inch well that's kind of cute one for each of us awesome thanks all right nice pack number two oh. Ooh. that is 32 millimeters and there's 10 of them in there and I have been wanting to try it out. I'm trying, one of our patrons is looking for how to do an icy base. And I'm trying to do a really good job so that anyone can do it. This, I, I think I'm going to turn one of these into an icy base. Uh, just to show you the possibilities. Yeah, uh, these are, these are really nice bases. So the 32 millimeters. Look at that. They are all individually done, I believe. There's lots of great variety. Ooh, more temple ones. Look, you can see what the temple ones have and the possibility of becoming once they become painted. They work so nicely. I'm excited to give these guys a go. And ooh, look at all these 32 mil uh, bases. This is an example of what the Urban Warfare ones look like already pre-painted. Don't they look awesome? Looks mm. pretty good. I'm going to open this up and show you. There are ten. One. Isn't that nice? Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Since it's resin, there might be something on it. I think you might be able to see. It may have something on it that uh, allows it to come out of its mold easier, but keeps paint off of it. So whenever I see a resin one, all you want to do is put it in soapy water, give it a bit of a scrub if it has little crevices like this, and let that dry, and then go ahead and prime it as normal. So I'm going to be priming this with uh, Vallejo Mecha Primer. It's just a airbrush primer for black. Airbrushing primer on is certainly my favorite way to do it, but if you don't have an airbrush You can use a spray can primer just fine on these. I would not at all suggest avoiding this step uh, Particularly for resin you do want to put a primer on there So that you have something for your paint to stick to 
Also, black is what I'm choosing. Not necessarily, and it wasn't necessarily the best choice for an ice base, but for stone and from ground, I find black to be a very nice uh, first color. Now that they're all dry, uh, I would always suggest working in out. So the ones that are in the crevices is what I would do first, and then I'll work up from there. I just find it easier. And we're going to start off with doing the ground brown. And as this is a nice thick brown, we're going to want to thin that down to make it easier to use. So I'm just going to grab my palette and grab some thinner and put it on separately and mix to its a low fat milk consistency. Okay. <laughs> Now, it doesn't particularly matter if I get it on the edges, since this is going to be old rock anyway, and I'm going to be dry brushing over those edges, so I'll have a lot of control of what remains. I'm only going to be doing one layer of this brown, uh, it's going to dry darker than what it currently looks like, um, and that's, that's what I want. Not taking much care, as you can tell. Just getting it on there. This one is... Uh, I don't know what color I'm going to do that statue yet. Maybe a marble? Or it could be the same color as the rest of the stone. I'm not sure yet. Okay. I'll just clean off my brush and wait for that to dry. So it's dry and we've got... Uh, I did the other ones as well while he was drying, so this one was a game, extra opaque, heavy sienna, just a layer of that. This had stone golem, uh, just one layer of that. This is green ochre, one layer of that, and in some places, dungeon grey, one layer of that in places. We are going to take a combination of heavy sienna and green ochre and combine it for my dry brushing. And then I'm gonna mostly wipe it off and start dry brushing. <laughs> And wherever it can't go, it won't go. And now, mostly the green ochre. Bum. La 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 That'll do for now. Now I'm going to dry brush on the stone, which is just going to be uh, Dungeon Grey first, which I already have on my palette. This will be a more heavier dry brushing. Let's see, how careful do I have to be? Not too careful. I didn't uh, clean out my brush of the previous color, that's alright. These are old runes. They had a bit of the brown in them. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. This isn't quite as opaque as I want it. Let's do it a little bit thicker. Keep a little bit more on the brush. Alright, now I'm going to use some rotten white for dry brushing on this fellow. I'm keeping it in one direction this time. A smaller dry brushing area. 
and it's snow, so in one direction looks better. All right, now I think it needs to dry before I can put any uh, more layers on it. Ooh, get over there. This cream mixed in with the ochre. Good. <laughs> now this is sand, so I think I'll just do it one direction as well. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll do it more than dire one direction. Yeah. All directions. I'll I'll get back to you. All right, you should probably be dry enough. Yeah, you're dry enough to move on to the next one. Next step is stone golem. Boop, boop, boop. Doop, 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 doop. Tentatively first. Oh, this white. All right, let's remove a little bit more. Hey, what is that doing there? What's that? Wait. I'm going to keep this white, paler color, um, clear of this uh, edge here to emphasize the shadows in that area. Nice and gently is the key, or if you don't want to use it nice and gently, you just remove it mostly out of the brush and you can do it more hurriedly if you wish. Whee! I think I'm going to do it a little bit more gently. This has so much texture in it, so you definitely want to try and get all of that lovely texture. That's why dry brushing is works really nicely because the texture comes out all on its own when you dry brush it. Choose a few really raised edges to emphasize even more here and there, making it look natural. Not all around the same piece. Just something that looks higher than the rest. We'll give it a little bit more emphasis. Say I did. Oh my goodness, it's too much. It's too private. What am I doing? Well, um, you can grab your darker color, Dungeon Grey. Grab some more of that. Get this white stuff off your brush a bit. Get your Dungeon Grey and calm that color down. Something like that. And keep going. Like it never happened. Let's bring that dirt a bit down, shall we? Grab some Agrax Earthshade. Bring the color down in that ground. Just in some places. A little bit. This Agrax Earthshade should darken it up a little bit. Just in the crevices. around these areas. Give that ground a little bit of a different color in places. This is kind of an unneeded step, 
but I'm doing it anyway. I likely wouldn't bother on the smaller temple bases, but you know, this is a big one. It's gonna be for someone fancy. We're gonna turn this to be icy, which is going to be with turquoise, a sinner, and rotten white. And cover it over. Like my stamping method? Okay. We'll let that dry. You are gonna go Elvic Flesh. Gamer's Grass makes um, these sets as well, little tough sets. I like this Highland tough set. There's an example of how they put all of their set together. Looks good. Now they said that you could put on uh, miniatures on this thing with super glue. Now there there is an adhesive already on the back of them, but I, I like to add a super glue. Actually, uh, I could lay all of them on as I like them, and then I could make up a PVA and water wash and cover the entire base on it. Um, it doesn't affect these. These still look the same, and it would um, bring everything to the same um, uh, same sheen, so no shiny rocks. So I might, yeah, I might do that. I will just do that. Let's grab a little piece of this little guy and put him right there. And this big one, put him right there. Flowers. Flowers growing up. <laughs> um, lots of flowers. Who oh, no. Just in this area. How about some? You over here. Grab some nice green. I'm gonna tear it in two. Put it there instead. Just clean up this base a bit with some black. And voila! Not so difficult. These have great potential, I think. Alright. Let's put some more rotten white on it. Mm -hmm. I'm working up to white. All right, now I think we're ready for some white. Now I'm going to use white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go carefully. It's going to be a different from regular dry brushing because it's going to be more patchy. Since it's, you know, snow. Mm. And a little bit of gloss varnish. Particularly on the ice. And all these little snowy spots. Little ice cubes. And 
and let's just dry brush it on the rest of it. I think it's time for some flocking here. Let's grab dry tufts. Might look good. like a log. Contrast paint, Gorkon to fur. Oh, wrong color. <laughs> Skeletal horde. Turn this green one that's a bit too green, a little bit brown at the same time. And we'll use this as a bit of a shadow. Dry brush the little skull with some alpic flesh. All right, I decided what I'm gonna do with this one. I'm gonna try um, my brick road. I've got several different colors. I'm gonna start with chocolate brown and tan, and I've already got that out, and I've got some of that left. All right, let's go with the chocolate brown on this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. I guess without cleaning it, we'll just go on to this one, and this one, Oop. this one. All right, and without cleaning it. Let's go on to tan. That's a... And a uh, heavy sienna. window. Should I do it metal or should it just be this brown? Right now, yep, I'm just doing it brown. And we're gonna let that dry. Now that it's dry, we're going to try a mix of uh, the green ochre and the tan. And tentatively, what's that gonna be? A little bit more of this brown. Um, these parts that don't seem to fit that well. Give it more of that brick look, I think. Um, let's go with a bit of pelvic flesh with that tan. Give these bricks a bit more pink. Very gently. Now I think it's time for that dark wash, but black. Null oil and um, lamium, lamium medium, one-to-one. 
so we can bring out some dips. To this a bit. Other. Should I scoot a little bit of grass in there? I guess it looks pretty good. On the two little grates, I'm going to add some Troll Slayer Orange, very tentatively. And you know, on the gravel, I'm just going to add a little bit more Null Oil to darken it up a bit. And here we are, we have our temple base. We have our desert base. We have our ice base, which I add some Valhalla Blizzard to after, just to add a bit extra snow. And we have our urban base, which somehow ended up a little bit suburban maybe, but I'm okay with that. So for Gamers Grass, uh, they have a website themselves, which I'll link in the description below. Again, they are, they've are they been a fantastic company to work with since uh, they sent me that first package to try out. They are, I've been happy with every one of them. All of their stuff is really nice. Um, I've noticed that when they do their own bases, again, they've got bases that are already fully pre-painted and ready to go. Uh, they're, they are made they've made everyone unique so uh, if you get any of their pre-made ones they are all unique i really enjoy their work like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and uh, hit that bell notification if you want to know every time i put out a new video have a great one bye